Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As we are going through wedding season, and many of us will be invited to many weddings throughout the next few months, we will see that in weddings, mashallah, many new innovations, just the sheer expenditure and how much money is being wasted and spent on weddings, which eventually leads to problems in a person's marriage. It's very important that we remind brothers and sisters what the hadith says about nikah. So the first hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned that the most blessed nikah is the one with the least expenditure, narrated in Bayhaqi and Mishkatul Masabih. Now this doesn't mean that one cannot spend on a wedding. You can't look good have it simple um, or you can't feed people by all means the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in Walima feed people but it's about wasting and it's about what we call fuzul kharji high expenditure which has no barakah in the end the second part we need to understand about simple nikahs um, is we see that many times especially as imams and ulama we get called to a hall venue now venues are very posh people want to go for a grand venue and um, something which they can show off to people that you know we had this many people and we spent this many thousand pounds so sometimes we get called to do a nikah and we are told to recite the quran say a few words from quran and hadith do a short talk and do the nikah and it all sounds really good everybody says ameen to the duas and then Sometimes the parents, the in-laws do a speech which is sometimes a little pretentious and things just don't feel right because immediately after that, the bride and groom, they have their celebrations and music is being blasted, there's free mixing, cars are coming in, um, hiring cars for thousands of pounds and this all goes against the imam's dua and the Imam's speech, so, and this is immediately, like within an hour um, before the nikah ceremony, we hear of many things such as the henna parties, dancing to Bollywood tunes, women particularly, and this is women of all stature in society, even those who claim to be religious, those associated with tabligh, those who may class themselves as alimas, and the list goes on. But then they expect the marriage and the Maulana and Mufti Sahib to do a dua that our daughter lives like the Queen of Jannah and she has a peaceful and blissful life. But your actions go against that. So this is a pure mockery of the Sunnah of the Prophet And we look into the lives of the Prophet and his wives, we'll see how simple their nikah was. When the Prophet ﷺ asked his son-in-law, Ali radiallahu anhu, to present mahar to his daughter Fatima, he replied he only owned a sword, armor and horse. So he sold his armor for 480 dirhams, which was the dowry presented to Fatima, the actual, the real queen of Jannah. For the wedding fee, Sa'ad ibn Ubada radiallahu anhu offered a sheep and some Ansar brought some corn. This was the simplicity of the marriage. This was pure and full of barakah. And this is why their marriages lasted. And this is narrated in Kanzul Ummal. Another aspect of marriages is the music. The music um, which is becoming more and more common. There's nothing wrong with playing a few nasheed. There's nothing wrong with having some halal entertainment but when it comes to music I can only think of the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, and I think we're living in that time now that where the Prophet وسلم, said there will appear people in my ummah who will hold adultery, silk, alcohol and musical instruments to be lawful narrated in Sahih Bukhari and this is what's happening people no longer class it as a sin and Everybody, every Muslim, no matter how practicing you are, even a young child knows that music is haram. There are many harms of music as well. Um, many of you will know that when a person 
he listens to music a lot, the love for Salah, the love for Qur'an decreases. This is one of the reasons why music is haram. We'll see physical effects, that not does it only affect the brain, but every organ of the body. There's a close relationship between music and bodily movements. Someone who listens to music in the car, first thing in the morning, on the radio, they start tapping their feet, they start tapping their hands. It affects a person's emotion. It also increases arousal in terms of alertment and excitement and psychological changes in the person. If a person does not stop listening to music, he gets addicted. It can be a cause for arousing the sexual desire of an individual leading to adultery and fornication. Therefore, Islam takes the preventative measure rather than suffer the consequences. And it has always been haram. There is no difference of opinion in this. Lastly, I'd like to mention the point which we see on social media now. People have no sharam. This is why the hadith is, If you have no modesty, do what you want. And we are living in that time thanks to social media. There's one thing doing a sin in private. You drink alcohol, you do zina, you listen to music in private. Allah will forgive you. But when you publicly commit a sin, it's the hadith of the mujahideen. Allah will not forgive the mujahideen, those who openly do sins. Allah hid your sin and you exposed it on social media. So throughout these months we've seen men and women openly dancing, openly free mixing. And sometimes it could lead to other things. And this shows how immoral the Muslim community have become in the UK.